Today I'd like to talk a little bit about proteins and the building blocks that make them up, which are called amino acids. So just as a reminder, if you've taken some organic chemistry, you know that polymers are long chain molecules that are made up of these individual repeating units that we call monomers. Monomers. So poly, of course, meaning many, mono meaning one. So these monomers make up these larger molecules called polymers. And proteins, which are one of the four biomolecules, meaning molecules that are um, have some sort of biological significance, are polymers of amino acids. And the, there's 20 different amino acids. So there's 20 different kinds, and we'll talk about their structure and kind of what they are and why they're important and all those good things. So the term protein comes from the Greek proteus, proteos, and it really means primary. This is the Greek. And I, I like to mention this because proteos, meaning primary, meaning of primary or first importance. So pro usually means, you know, first, first the door for pro, primary. So this primary importance and this primary significance that we saw with proteins came about because early scientists thought actually the proteins uh, were the houses of genetic information. So before we knew about DNA and before we understood kind of the genetic code, then early scientists thought that that all of the keys to life came from proteins. And they had good reasons to think so because there are a ton of different things that proteins do in our bodies. Just to give you kind of a general sense of what some of those functions are. And I always like to say, you know, like a couple years ago, there was like, there's an app for that. Uh, there's a protein for that because there's all these different functions that we can see uh, in our bodies and biological organisms in general, so not just animals, but plants, where proteins are of the first or primary importance. Some of this would be things like structure. So we get things like keratin or collagen that are structural. Uh, support, like um, actin fibers in our muscles. Hormones, like oxytocin, uh, communication and signaling. Uh, enzymes, these are biological catalysts. Um, enzymes are proteins that have some sort of function that help to speed up biological reactions. Storage, so they're involved in keeping things where they're supposed to be. Um, transport, like hemoglobin, because it can transport port, um, oxygen all over the body. And protection and immunity, so things like immunoglobin is a protein that is important for you know keeping us healthy. So proteins have a ton of different uh, functions in our bodies, and they're made up of 20 different amino acids. So let's talk about these amino acids that make up all of these proteins, because there are things about them that are the same, and there are things about them that make them each, each of the 20 unique. So what we have here is on one side we have an amine group, and remember that prefix am indicates the presence of nitrogen. So ammonia, for example, is NH3. We have amine and amide functional groups when we're talking about an organic chemistry kind of background. So an amine group, which of course is our nitrogen, on this particular molecule it's attached to two hydrogens and this kind of central carbon. So the amine is attached to this central carbon where everything is kind of coming off of it. And this carbon is called the alpha carbon. That's a Greek alpha, which is the first letter of the Greek alphabet. So that alpha carbon is also connected to a hydrogen. And on the other side, it's connected to a carboxylic acid or a carboxyl group. So carboxylic acids or carboxyl groups from our organic chemistry. So we have carboxyl on one side, amine on the other. So carboxylic acid gives you the acid part and the amine gives you the amino part hence amino acid so everything all amino acids all 20 of them have that same kind of structure the same three things around that central carbon that alpha carbon and then that r group is what makes it different so this r group is also called a side group sometimes it's just called an r group and that side group can have different characteristics. And we'll talk about kind of what they are and how they impact the structure in the next series of videos. But at least in this introductory video, we're gonna talk a little bit about kind of how we characterize and classify these different amino acids. Okay, so 
When we put this in a context, so this is just one amino acid on its own. If we put this in the context of a protein, we call this an alpha amino acid. And the reason that we call it that is based on that alpha carbon. So sometimes you'll see these terms used, alpha amino acid and amino acid, used interchangeably because usually we're talking about amino acids in the context of a larger polymer structure. Okay, so there's our stuff in common. The, just as a side note here, because I'm an inorganic chemist by trade, so biochemistry is not outside of my educational background, but it's definitely not my primary uh, research interest. So I like to talk about the shapes of things, and the shapes are so important in organic and biochemistry, and so I really like to kind of focus on that. We draw this planar. I'm drawing it two-dimensional, right? But if I was to think about this in terms of Vesper, do we remember Vesper? Valence shell, electron pair repulsion, which gives us a 3D model of how we can think about and understand molecules. Then this lone pair is going to cause this amine group to have kind of this trigonal kind of pyramid geometry. So three things and a lone pair gives me trigonal pyramid, which is that kind of three things attached to a central atom. And that lone pair that brings it out of the plane. This carbon here is going to have tetrahedral geometry. So four things around a central atom with those 109.5 degree angles. And then this guy, this carbon in, with the carbonyl and the alcohol group attached to it that make up the carboxylic acid here, this is going to be trigonal planar geometry. So we have this guy kind of in the plane, this coming out of the plane, this one coming out of the plane. So we draw these things as static and flat. And when we start to talk about the different levels of structure and proteins, then it can you can lose sight of how complicated and big and unruly these things get. But remember that we're drawing it two-dimensionally because, yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm on a two-dimensional surface. But we live in a three-dimensional universe. So this three-dimensional, this three-dimensionality of it, this kind of stereochemistry, the conformation of this thing is going to be really important when we talk about the interactions of these R groups, which is going to tell you some information about how the proteins are put together. Okay, I'm already getting excited. So let's talk a little bit more about uh, the different classifications of amino acids. So these alpha amino acids are categorized by their R groups, as I mentioned. So these side groups, these things that are coming off of the alpha carbon. So as you're kind of getting used to looking at amino acids, the first step is where is my alpha carbon? So it's going to be this guy. Here's my alpha carbon. I have a hydrogen. I have an amine group, I have my carboxylic acid, and then I have something sticking off of the side. So that something here is my R group. In this case, it's a methyl group. So meth as a prefix means one carbon. So that methyl group is just a nonpolar. It's just carbon and hydrogen bonds, which we know are nonpolar. So this nonpolar R group and kind of this balanced out normal polarity of of your top part. Everything is in common here. So now we're just classifying based on what's going on in this R group side. This R group is nonpolar and in terms of its um, isoelectronic status or kind of um, its isoelectric point, which is where it's biologically active in terms of pH is in the neutral range. Okay, so this amino acid is one of the 20 and it is called alanine. There are a couple different ways that you're going to see amino acids um, abbreviated because we don't just write out a list of them. Although the longest words in the English language are the names of proteins with all of the amino acids listed out. So if you want some fun activities for your weekend, then I would highly recommend listening to watching YouTube videos of people reading out the names of proteins. There's three letter designations. So alanine is abbreviated ALA. And there is a single letter designation, and it is also abbreviated with a capital A. Okay, So sometimes you'll see these all kind of interchangeably. Um, depending on how big or the focus of the research, then you'll see these in kind of different contexts. So this is alanine. Now, because this R group is nonpolar, if we're thinking about what this does in an aqueous medium, because, you know, biological organisms are mostly walking bags of water, then this interaction with water is going to be one of, of dislike, right? If we think about intermolecular forces, like dissolves like, like likes to interact with like, and we're talking about polarity there. So we say that something is nonpolar is hydrophobic or water fearing hydrophobic. 
So there's a group of these things, and alanine is just an example of it, um, that have this hydrophobic R group, and that's going to cause them to have specific interactions with other amino acids and with their biological organism that they are a part of. Okay, now you can also have a, an amino acid that has a polar R group. So uh, an example of this, and again, this, these aren't the only ones in there, but I just kind of selected ones. So first thing is we identify our alpha carbon. So that's this guy at the middle. So we see that we have our hydrogen, our amine, and our carboxylic acid. So my R group here is this. So I have a carbon with a couple hydrogens, and it's this hydroxyl group here, or alcohol group. that makes it polar. So that oxygen carbon bond is polar, that oxygen hydrogen bond is polar, there's gonna be a slight net dipole there, which is gonna cause that R group to be slightly on the polar side. Polar. And we know like dissolves like, so if we're thinking about how this is gonna interact with water, as opposed to our non-polar that are hydrophobic, we say that these polar ones are hydrophilic, which means water loving. And it comes from philia in Greek again, uh, which means to love, as opposed to phobia, which means to fear. Usually um, students always think love and hate, right? So it's not water hating, it's water fearing um, and water loving. Now the name of this particular amino acid is called serine. And I like mentioning the names of the amino acids, not because I usually have students memorize all of them, especially at an introductory level, but because a lot of them are quite familiar and you'll see them on labels of things because the names um, are actually things that are quite commonly found in a lot of different foods. You'll find them in medications, you'll find them in vitamins, and kind of get into all of that. So the three-letter abbreviation for serine is SER, and the one-letter abbreviation is S. So, so far there's order to the chaos. Um, when we get into the acidic and basic ones, we get some a little bit of weirdness. So that's where we're going next. Okay, so far so good. So we have nonpolar, neutral, polar, neutral, again, so kind of talking about where these things like to exist in a pH kind of range that is in the 6 to 8 kind of range. That's sort of what we classify as neutral in terms of pH. And now acidic amino acids are going to be amino acids that have a carboxylic acid in their R group. And we'll get into the acidic and basic behavior of amino acids in a different video when we talk about zwitter ions, which is one of my favorite vocabulary terms, and I can't wait to talk about them. But for this purpose, where we're just introducing the different classifications, then this is kind of our general rule. It's acidic if it has a carboxylic acid in it, it's basic if it has an amine in it. So this particular amino acid, I have a lot more carbons here, so my alpha carbon is gonna be this guy, and I can tell because it has the amine and the carboxylic acid coming off of it, there's the hydrogen, and this whole thing is going to be my R group then. And this R group has the carboxylic acid, which is this bit. And in normal conditions, then, this is my acidic hydrogen. So I'm going to be losing this hydrogen into solution, which makes it acidic. So that's our definition. And this is called aspartate. It's abbreviated. Its three-letter abbreviation is ASP. Like a snake. And the one letter abbreviation is D uh, because A was already taken, <laughs> I think. So I'm not sure why it's D. So it, this is also called aspartic acid because of the carboxylic acid in the R group, but aspartate is the name of the amino acid. So you will see it both ways. Now, on the basic side of things, Then again, we're getting kind of bigger and more complicated, but the feature that we're looking at, here's our alpha carbon, amine, carboxylic acid, here's my R group. The feature I'm really looking at is this amine group at the end. This is an ammonium, actually, because I have a hydrogen that has come onto it. If we think Bronsted Lowry, so my hydrogen has come onto this guy, making it basic because it is accepting the proton. This is called lysine, and the three-letter abbreviation is lyse. And for reasons unknown, uh, the one letter abbreviation is K. So this is just, again, to kind of get you a chance to look at what the different structures are, see what they have in common, start getting used to looking at these features. And if you have any questions on this, don't hesitate to reach out. Otherwise, I'll talk to you again soon.